The following is a presentation of the Four Center podcast feed. From the center of the galaxy, this is the Four Center podcast feed, and this particular episode is the Bad Batch Report. Mm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, That is wonderful. Sometimes we have exciting drums. Sometimes we have forlorn horns coming from Ken to celebrate the beginning of the episode. Today, we have the the rhythmic (laughs) sighs of crosshair. Mm. That's that's pretty much it. Some of the best mm's I've seen in Star Wars. Were this is some phenomenal uh, uh, emotionally repressed acting. <laughs> <laughs> some of the best deep meaning coming from uh, small grumbles and mm's, uh, which absolutely can be music. I invite anyone to take the noises that Ken made and set them to a beat. <laughs> and we can have Crosshair's Dance Party. Uh, indeed, Crosshair's uh, <laughs> Crosshair's dance party. Set it to song, the Ballad of Mmm. <laughs> the Ballad of Mmm. Anyway, I'm Joseph Scrimshaw, and the person recording the tracks for Crosshair's dance party is Ken Nabsock. Uh, it was good to have some fun at the top of the podcast because that's over, right? Um, this episode could not be farther. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from Crosshair's dance party. We joke. We will have fun uh, while discussing a beautifully brutal episode of The Bad Batch. Uh, it is episode 12 in of season two, entitled The Outpost, double directed by Nathaniel Villanueva and Brad Rao, uh, continuing story editor credit to Matt Machenovitz. This episode, written by the head writer herself, Jennifer Corbett. So you know it's a special one. Ken, any reaction to those credits? Uh, look, Matt Machenovitz, uh, we just the MVP of the season, man. We, I don't think we spend this much time talking about story editors, unfortunately, <laughs> in my life, and which is maybe a shame, but uh, this, it's important stuff. You got to take all this, put it together, streamline it. Streamline, I, I love it. And, and Jennifer Corbett, uh, glad to see her name on that. Yeah, I... I yeah, I don't know how the how that came about. I don't know if she was like, "Look, I need this one. This is I got this one to tell," or, <laughs> uh, whatever it was. But uh, uh, good stuff, and the two directors make sense with that one of the scenes kind of there at the end, having a perhaps that's where the divide was. But anyways, all that to say, I, I love these names. I love this team. I really do. They just got this awesome all star team forming on the Bad Batch. And I love it. Yeah, it really is an an all star team. Like we've said in previous weeks, a, a ton of a long standing Star Wars animation veterans uh, with some fresh new voices, and just always wanting to highlight that Jennifer Corbett is the head writer. Uh, obviously, Dave Filoni credited up and down for for getting the ball rolling on this. Uh, still involved, obviously, but sometimes you see those tweets or headlines of Dave Filoni's Bad Batch and like, yeah, he has a no. Um, And I I think you and I both agree that we really enjoyed season one, but season two has really been something special and different. So really wanting the people who who are making it special and different to get the credit for that. I really agree with that. And, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm just, I'm getting to the point. It it goes against some of the stuff we talk about here at Force Center of just, you know, everyone, you know, love Star Wars in your own way. And every, but I'm getting close to being like, Bad Batch is my favorite Star Wars show and you know, <laughs> I'll get to be with it. But um, <laughs> spiritually it is, but I, I love all, love all Star Wars, of course, but clearly, but I just, every week, this is, uh, that, that music cue hits the beginning and I'm just ready for the journey. N- nothing wrong with, uh, with having a favorite, having a one that you're enjoying the most. And I think in some ways, um, I, I, Bad Batch is the one that is surprising me the most right now. Um, yeah. And yeah. I think that's what's really uh, alluring about it is the ideas are well constructed. Um, each episode is well constructed. And the season has been veering from these celebrations of the joy that you can still find in dark times of, of here's how to get through a dark time. Hey, you know what? Sometimes the real treasure is community and discovery (laughs) and then some episodes it's just like would you like to go through absolute hell with a character here you go and that power of not knowing which you're going to experience makes it kind of thrilling every time i click the button on uh, on our screeners which we are tm lucky to have (laughs) as always as always though that time is running out uh yeah no i'm with you on that i I love the journey i love the surprise every week and 
Uh, there's just something about season two. It's just been it's just been hitting all the right notes, and including the the sad somber ones. <laughs> Some sad somber notes in this one. So, what was your viewing experience when you did uh, click the button and enter into mystery? Uh, <laughs> when did you do that? Uh, last week, and and again this morning, and I've been having fun, kind of after you and I record, uh, whipping up whatever probably unhealthy lunch I'm having and sitting down and just kind of watching it while it's fresh. Right. And, uh, but then the downside is you have to sit with it for a week. Mm -hmm. and you want to scream to the heavens. This is what it's about. Crosshair. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I had a similar experience. Uh, we did our Mando report, uh, and I really just wanted to watch the next episode of, of Bad Batch. I was just in a Star Wars mood and I was like, hey, I got more Star Wars and I need to get a jump on uh, preparing uh, this uh, discussion review. Um, so I watched it right after we recorded our Mandalorian report. I had some leftover pasta. So I had a bleak afternoon of pasta and trauma <laughs> <laughs> as oh. I watched this uh, really powerful episode. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, hey, it's, it's a comforting food. You might need that. Yeah. yeah, no, it was good. It was good. I needed I needed the comfort of my old friend Cheese as I watched this <laughs> devastating episode. Uh, so what was your overall reaction to the episode? I, I get the vibe that you loved it. Is that wrong? Where'd you go? I wrote down these words. Hot damn, I love this one. Um, really did, man. I, could, I consider this one almost a short film of uh, something of its own. It's so tied to everything. It leads us places, of course, of course. But it just... The vibe, the presentation, we, we talk about the music. It's another win for the music from the opening notes. Just some of the best yet in the series and Clone Wars, Rebels, and Star Wars. Obviously, no disrespect to John Williams. Got some John Williams content coming out here on the channel. I don't want anyone to assume that. But it, like, I, 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 we talk about Kevin Kiner a lot. But I still mm -hmm. think we could talk about it more. And I think the, the mood, everything about it, just those opening notes. I was like, oh, this isn't good. This is this isn't going to be a fun chipper episode, and, and I think we needed it. And and, and I'll say this: uh, I I have loved what they've done with Crosshair, and 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 that includes the fact that I, I we haven't spent a ton of time with him this season, and mm -hmm. I personally like that. I don't know if that's for everyone. I haven't seen a lot of hashtag where's Crosshair. You know, maybe I missed it. I don't know. I apologize for those fans, but I I, I just think there's something powerful about what they've done with him. Separated him. Isolated him. Um, in another way you could, I, I mentioned this before, but you could have him, he's the one chasing them down every week. He knows the inside and he's angry. At, the, even the big change that might be starting to happen with him and the big change he went through in this episode could have been more directly tied where, you know, the hunters going, but we were, we were friends, man. It's not that they're separated. He's separated from those who probably, you know, the only ones who love and care for him as a uh, crosshair versus a clone. Uh, a designation number and uh, there's some talk about some of the themes of change and, and how I think some change can be um, you know pushed along a little bit more effectively and it's and it's and it's crosshairs journey and seeing it and seeing him by himself uh, we talk about his oops and all that stuff one of my favorite little moments in 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 Bad Batch so far this year is, is him throwing like to the toothpick on the ground as he's getting on the shuttle and there was just so much in that. It was just, it was, it was kind of almost a stereotypical like soldier in a movie, like a ah, cigarette on the ground. But there's just something about it. I just absolutely loved it. And so therefore, just I'm, I'm here for the journey across here, but glad that we haven't spent every week with him because it makes these episodes sing even more for me. Yeah, no, I really agree. I think there there could have been a version of this story where it, it was similar to what happened in the first season of uh, he crossed paths with the Bad Batch multiple times and they kind of tried to understand his perspective. We tried to understand his. They tried to come together again. Um, but what we get instead is something that we don't always get in Star Wars is someone that we're sympathetic to makes a decision that that we, the audience, I think, can read is not good for them. But they make it and they cling to it. And what we're getting to see with these two Crosshair episodes this season is getting to just see them sit and simmer and suffer in the bad choice that they made. So mm -hmm. we get to feel it the way that they feel it, right? Yeah. Yeah, very much so. Simmer. I like that word. Yeah, a lot of a lot of simmering crosshair in this one. And and I agree that Kevin Kiner's music keeps being a highlight of these episodes because it's working so well with yeah. every other element. Uh, last uh, season of Bad Batch Report, uh, we kept talking about how beautiful the animation is every episode to the point where we almost stopped. 
Uh, and then I had said, well, I, I tell my wife I love her every day. I can say every episode of Bad Batch has <laughs> got beautiful animation. And I'm now going to transfer that to Kevin Kiner. Uh, mm -hmm. If I can tell my wife I can love her every day, I can say every episode of our podcast that Kevin Kiner's music is amazing. Uh, I think that's a lesson for life, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Tell Kevin Kiner that you love his music every day. Well, mm, uh, maybe not. Uh, anyway, point is, it's amazing. Uh, you wrote down Hot Damn, I Love It. Uh, I wrote in all caps, a brutal banger. Um, <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's so powerful. Um, I think one of the things that has been really powerful this season, I've mentioned a couple of times, is we keep having these uh, stories that in terms of the actual plot point the scope of travel be the beginning the middle and end they're very simple minimal direct stories mm -hmm. uh but every choice of music location camera angle voice acting scenic design makes you feel the living hell out of it and i, I think that's what you're what i hear when you say it feels like a short film it's this one idea explored to its absolute depth um yeah. and this was yet another one of these episodes in this one to me was just uh, not shying away at all from the absolute horror of the empire the absolute horror of what has been done to the clones i i think it um mm -hmm. without being a direct riff on john carpenter's the thing it really evokes john carpenter's uh, the thing of the 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 frigid environment the frigid base where there there is a a monster to be fought but the monster turns everybody against one another and, and it's one of those you know uh, the monster becomes hey there's an actual person to be fought a thing to be fought but also even your allies are now to be fought it's so isolating so alone um yeah. uh, having uh grown up in the midwest in minneapolis which can get brutally hot but also dangerously you know, uh, absolutely life riskingly cold. I felt this episode. I have been frostbitten in real life. I have been close to frostbitten. I have had times where, um, you know, my mom had to, the heater went out and if we stayed there, we would die and mm -hmm. we had to be bundled up and taken somewhere <laughs> with only our eyes exposed. And, and even then you could start to feel the flesh around your eyes crust. Um, having had that experience in real life, uh, oh man could i feel this episode it was so well done to make you feel physically what crosshair was going through mm, physically emotionally uncomfortable uh isolated uh i love uh i, I don't love what you're saying regarding that story <laughs> I, it would give you another blanket but um yeah a feeling that any idea of the short film that it just you know it's one idea and explored it to its depths uh i love what you said there because that's that's just what i felt from from the opening to to the close including the little uh see, little it's a big scene but it, it, the scene at the end uh, in a different location uh, all worked for me in that way yeah absolutely uh it, it is so so impactful one other uh kind of big picture thing that this episode made me feel and it's kind of about this episode but about the bad batch in general of what an interesting journey the audience has been able to go on with the clones uh, throughout the story of Star Wars. In in Attack the Clones, you know, we don't get to know the clones, but the existence of the clones is a failure. It is the the uh, sad uh, fist bang <laughs> on the balcony of Bail Organa that we love. It, it is Padme's goal is to stop this escalation of violence, to stop there being an army a grand army of the Republic. So we meet the clones as a failure, but it's not the clones failure, right? It's, it's Palpatine's, uh, uh, it's the galaxy's the failure to allow Palpatine to do this. And then we get to meet them and get to know them in, in the Clone Wars animated series. And, and we get to know them as people, as individuals, we root for them. They do have victories. They do help people, but there's this giant asterisk where the entire time we know they are pawns trapped in a pointless unjust war. Yeah. So by the time we get to Bad Batch and and the Bad Batch has broken away, we get to just root for them, mm -hmm. truly and deeply be without any caveats on their side, you know? Mm -hmm. And I felt that way about Mayday in this episode. 
Yeah, completely, completely. Yeah, I like that view of it there. We, you don't have to wrestle with the big things around them. They just, they're there. They're going through a, 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 even a transition we all could understand in our own lives. We're all right. <laughs> I didn't think the war would end. What am I without that? I didn't think about that. I didn't think about retirement. I didn't think about job change. Uh, I didn't think about any of this stuff. And, and who am I? Who am I is a big question uh, through a lot of the uh, clone conversations these days. And, and I love that. Yeah. So uh, let's get into those ideas that you're talking about. The big theme, the big ideas at stake in this uh, beautiful, brutal episode. Where did you go with what the big ideas were for you? I have no idea. I'll be honest with you. I have no idea. No, I, here's where I go. I, 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 there's a lot of ways I, I, you, you could analyze the the empire and, 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 and uh, the, the show continues to do that. It continues to expose it. And this one wasn't subtle about it. It didn't need to be subtle about it. That wasn't the point. Lieutenant Nolan represents so many things of the empire's evil. Uh, but like you said earlier, it just made it all intimate and personal. So I, 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 I summed it up for me. If, if, if Crosshair finds the value in life, and maybe in his own life, uh, this idea of that, you know, he's he's brutal, but he's a survivor. Um, they've had to. And, and you got the ice vultures, by the way. I love any creature with the word ice in front of it. Uh, <laughs> representing that, uh, they represent it. It could be you could look at them as death lingering over you, too. But just they're, they're referred to as these survivors. A uh, mm-hmm. May Day. Uh, I've just I loved everything about that. And how he found the value in life. You know, you get, there's a lot of things we can talk about, too, about the the why of the orders. We're good soldiers. We followed orders. We've heard that since episode one of the Bad Batch. That's that's one of the big things with Crosshair. But to finally analyze the why, uh, playing it against uh, you're being replaced. And, and it's you're, it, it, by the way, you already were. That gear had been there. That gear had been there for a year or so. So this mm-hmm. was happening. You didn't even know it. This, this Mayday didn't know it. And the, all that. But all of it coming down to this. Crosshair find, finds the uh, the value in life, in life itself, the, the survival, his survival, Mayday's uh, death, all that stuff. And that, that can drive you forward to a lot of big change because uh, he hasn't had that before. I pull the trigger. That's what I'm told to do. I don't care. I don't question it. I don't care if they die or live just as long as my mission's completed. A mission's a mission, he says at the beginning of this. At the end of this, um, he has a completely different perspective. Yeah, it is not just a, a mission anymore. Yeah, I, I love what you're saying. I think they're uh, one of the ways that I broke down and want to spend some more time with it is this idea of, you know, what is your value um, mm-hmm. that that I think there's some reawakening of, of what it means to be a soldier. Uh, it, I think there is some reawakening exactly what you're saying of just life has value. Um, mm-hmm. But I also wanted to spend a little bit of time here talking about the contrast <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, to discovering that life has value, which is for me the the theme I wrote down, maybe as being negative, is just death. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, how much the idea of death is all around him, which is I think what pushes him to finally reevaluate the value of of life, the value of of purpose. Uh, up to a point, um, I think that's part of what made me feel like this episode was really powerful as it didn't shy away from Mm -hmm. all of these images of death. Right. Um, I think, you know, we've been introduced to crosshair in the bad Batch show is a symbol of somebody who is just refusing to bend, change, adjust, evolve. Right. He's content with his life where he is a soldier. It's defined this way. He goes on missions and even with all of the evidence being thrown in his face that that way of life is changing and you have to change, he just clings to what he has known. Mm-hmm. And this is the episode where it's finally almost literally impossible to cling to what he's known because everything he's known is literally dead <laughs> yeah. or metaphorically dead, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the Republic his bond with the bad batch, even Rampart, if Rampart was even a sliver of an ally, he's gone too. Everything is literally or metaphorically gone. Um, I think that was to me, like the, the great power of the revelation of they're doing all of this to protect stormtrooper gear. They're doing all this to protect the symbol of the clones are done, you know? Um, He's clung so hard, right? He he had the there was a made a big deal out of the, the, the chip was out, and he still made the choice himself, right, to define himself as a good soldier who follows orders. 
And you can go, well, that's a really morally dubious decision when your your following orders is, you know, <laughs> murdering innocent Jedi and Padawans and taking out Saw's early partisans and all that. Uh, so morally dubious choice. Then it's an isolating choice. He's rejected the Bad Batch. Nobody wants to sit with him at lunch. But OK, great. He can yeah. soldier on. Right. He can't. He's isolated, morally dubious, but he can keep clinging on to this former life. Mm -hmm. And now it's now it, now he's like literally clinging, literally clinging to a metaphorical corpse. I said literally and metaphorically, but <laughs> that way of life is just like, it's like, it's not good, <laughs> yeah. but it's what I know. And I'm going to cling to it and it rots in his arms. This episode mm -hmm. until all he's clinging to is stormtrooper soldiers. These, you know, skull like visages of the truth that he's not wanted anymore. He's clinging to nothing. I, I thought that was really powerful. Yeah. It goes to what you're saying of, of, of your own value, right? Find, find your worth, accept nothing less. That's great on a bumper sticker, but I think it's a long journey there. And, and, and there's, there's fear in that, right? Uh, I think that's a lot of what you and I talk about fear in terms of, you know, a lot of people in power that want to sell fear, but this is an individual. You make a decision, uh, to change from that or reverse it a lot there's a lot of fear a lot of shame a lot of confusion a lot of it's the kylo ren of it all like i can't go back you can't go back so destroy what's in the past it's easier and i think all that stripped away he's left with nothing but uh his choice staring at him i love that you brought in the image of him eating alone right such a big image it's just such such a thing man and, and, and i think so far it's just been like i didn't change they did yeah <laughs> yeah Exactly. Where's that getting you? Yeah. And, yeah. and he's not really wanted to reckon with the fact that the Republic changed the empire. Like Cody tries to mm -hmm. kind of say that yeah. changed. And he's like, nah, I don't want to deal with that. Right. And that's what's so powerful about all of the all the symbolism of this episode, which is, you know, pretty straightforward. But I think what's so powerful about it is it's the emotional uh, it, it's the it's making the emotional real and physical right of mm -hmm. he he can keep lying to himself lying to bad batch lying to cody that things haven't changed he can cling to something mm -hmm. and we all know what it's like to cling try to cling to something when <laughs> when it's over yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. i think i think most of us have experienced that you know a friend group has moved on or you know the, a restaurant yeah. changed owners and you kind of try to cling to it <laughs> but the thing you actually loved isn't there anymore and we are made to feel that of he's telling himself this lie he's surrounded mm -hmm. by uh clone troopers being forcefully <laughs> sent off yeah. to space florida to be retired against their will right <laughs> um he's surrounded by stormtroopers the the new version that are replacing him and then he's sent to a planet that just is death it's it's a yeah. cold almost lifeless morgue in Ice vulture is circling above. The mines are underfoot. Death is above. Death is below. Your replacement is at your side. And the cargo you're chasing isn't even low value. It's a paper saying, bleep you. We don't <laughs> want you anymore. Yeah. I know you're trying to cling to us, but bleep off. Yeah. You're you're gone. You're done. Mm -hmm. Being so surrounded by e physical evidence that you're clinging to nothing. It was so powerful. Yeah, and I and I think this goes into some of the stuff in my head about uh, change is often a very long journey. It's it's not uh, uh, it doesn't necessarily come out of uh, a, a debate that can harden you. I think there's been moments where I've seen Crosshair just be real hardened. I like that you say he just doesn't want to face it. Uh, and and I go back to some of the stuff attack and, and and Omega we're talking about an Echo and everything. I'm just like we all have to make our own decisions. Crosshair made his mm -hmm. and we've got, that is his, that's what he's got to do. And, and I think so, as, as someone who, who tries to tackle change in a way I, I, I didn't used to, and I'm still very stubborn or I'll, I'll order the same food at a restaurant or drive the same way and blah, blah, blah. But as someone who's tried to change overall, I think that the, the change in me was feeling, um, feeling a little isolated or looking around and going, I'm still, I, I still, I'm still here and I'm looking around and this ain't where I want to be. But that doesn't necessarily you mean anyone can yell at me to get out of there. <laughs> no one can put out their hand to pull me out. I gotta, I gotta do it myself, and I gotta realize 
what's going on around me doesn't work for me anymore. And it happens in different ways. And so I, so to tie it to that conversation with Omega to now actually see, this is why I like, it isn't Hunter with his hand out going, follow me, brother. Yeah. I'm your brother. It's none of that. And that might come, maybe that comes, but for right now it's, it's, it's an ice vulture. <laughs> and there go, this ain't right. And I'm done, I'm done being in this wrong for me, you know, for this part of my journey. If yeah, that- no. No, I love that you're saying that. I love that you're bringing up, you know, Omega and Tech's conversation because Tech's perspective too is that like it's, uh, you know, it's not that I am, I am not bothered by change. I am. But the way that I wrestle with that is I accept that change is happening constantly mm-hmm. and I have to adapt to it. I don't particularly enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. But wrong, for yeah. me, it's an absolute reality. It's just factual, right? That mm-hmm. these changes happen. So here are, now are my three options to respond. And yes. text perspective that that he you know expresses to Omega in that great episode in that great uh, lagoon chat they have is the dead o- opposite of of where Crosshair has been of like I won't acknowledge the change mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. to to adapt to it which is absolutely uh, great and and heartbreaking mm-hmm. but but I do think he does you know change and reawaken a little bit in this episode yeah. um, I did want to ask you one death question <laughs> fire away. Uh, it, it is, in fact, about firing away. This episode is the, this play between death and the possibility of, of responding to, to death and abandonment and, you know, dismissal by, by clinging to what is your actual value, clinging to a reassessment of, of life. So I, I do think there's an element of that. But when Nolan just brutally allows Mayday to die mm. uh, in that Ice vulture circles ahead. That that that's a moment of death to me, <laughs> where mm-hmm. Crosshair is making this choice to be like, "I'm finally been pushed too far." And we, we can talk about the positive angle of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but he deals death to Nolan, and I wanted to ask you about this. I felt like that was one of those moments in a in a story where time slowed down, and as soon as Mayday died. I felt like an hour passed while I in my head said, shoot him. <laughs> and I, and I feel, uh, I, I think this is sometimes why I, I, I like horror. I like dark things because it's a, a safe place to explore darker feelings. I don't feel great about that, but I want to be honest that I was like, yeah. shoot him, please shoot him. Uh, so I want to ask you how you felt about that moment. And if you were also, Mm-hmm. Uh, in our beloved Star Wars that often preaches pacifism and community and connection, were you also wishing for the death of Lieutenant Nolan? <laughs> I was. <laughs> uh, I was with you on that. It's interesting. I do want to talk about the ice vultures and, and some of the meaning, the what I'm calling the anti convors um, Because I, I said, I, I think there's this great the moment earlier about them. They're, they're survivors. They're, they're this, they're that, but they survive. So, so but that particular moment, I initially took it, and I think it might be in the ballpark where you're talking about where he's looking up. He's like, Mayday's dead. This guy would have me die and not care because at least he can clear out a roster spot for a stormtrooper. Um, and this vulture's just waiting to eat us all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, uh, you know, and if he's a survivor, I've got to survive. And 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 I think it's a danger. Uh, I don't want to I sound like one of those yelling at clouds, but it's like, you know, you see a lot of just like, this isn't a moment that's endorsing Crosshair's actions. No. And I definitely don't think you're thinking that, but I think it's one of I those moments. Not. Yeah, definitely one of those moments of like, you know, analyzing how you get here, what do you do? And, and there could be some ramific- ramifications of that. Or maybe not, because Nolan's probably not a character of consequence, right? Um, he's just as expendable probably for his higher ups than, than that. So anyways, uh, easy, easy answer. Yeah, I was rooting for it. I was like, do it, do it, do it, do it. Um, but, uh, I don't know if that's right. I don't know if that's right, but I don't know what else he could have done. Cause I think, I think he would have, he would have been left to dead, left to die. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think so. I think so. Uh, I think that, I, yeah, I, I, I took the, I, the ice vulture is being multifaceted of, it is mm-hmm. a symbol of death. Right. <laughs> uh, it is a symbol of being unrelenting. Uh, mm-hmm. But there's something to be admired in that, in, in being unrelenting. And I think it's something where like Crosshair feels maybe some affinity for like, yeah, I'm like the vulture, you know, maybe people yeah. judge me or are afraid of me, but I do 
whatever it takes to survive. And I admire it. And mm. I think there's almost like that up there is a symbol of who I believe I am. And I'm just be left here to rot in the cold and be pecked apart by it. That's what this guy thinks my value is Mayday's value, all clones. Um, and it's a real breaking point, you know, mm -hmm. um, in, and we can talk more about exactly what breaks crosshair in that moment. But mm -hmm. I think uh, it, the episode was well constructed to just make me, obviously there's nothing subtle about Nolan being set up to make you absolutely just like Nolan. Right. Um, <laughs> Got a lot it, of gray in Nolan. Yeah. There was, there was, we were not, uh, we were not presented with any, any gray. Mm -hmm. So I think I wanted to be honest about it, uh, about how I felt about it because I, I don't in, in, endorse it <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know i i don't I admire it or want to replicate that in real life at all i think it's the power of story that it can sometimes be um a pressure release mm, mechanism mm. for for behavior that you are tempted <laughs> yeah, by but don't want to do in real life and i think uh, I think so many of us uh, are, are struggling in the real world and mm -hmm. we are pushed too far. Yeah. And, and this episode was so well done to show somebody being pushed too far and taking a step that I don't endorse, that I don't want to do in real life, yeah. even as a metaphor, lashing out in anger. Um, but it was cathartic to watch because I think so many of us are under a huge amount of pressure and feel like we're being pushed pushed too far mm -hmm. and to see somebody push too far and just be like i don't even care what happens to me but you gotta go is was um was bleak but powerful yeah no this is uh, a friend had asked me hey do you, you know what's the next bad batch about it's just dark, <laughs> it's just dark. <laughs> uh th there's a line you, you make me think of, of one of the lines i wrote down you probably wrote down too if it's it's not up to you to determine what is the value what is the value to the empire right mm -hmm. this episode's so much about finding your own value and and that's that's kind of the moment you got this bleep in front of you driving that point home uh this might be yeah, this might be what happens. But yeah, I agree. I agree that it, it was a beautiful moment. Uh, and not the necessarily shooting, but just the the ice vulture shadow, mm -hmm. <laughs> the ice vulture screech. The subtitles were hilarious in this episode. Um, a lot of that stuff. It, it, it was it was a well earned moment. Yeah, I also think it is just a, a thing to be you know aware of in storytelling. Of uh, stories are. Uh, they are constructed to make us feel a, a certain way. And we've get, been getting a lot of, of, of intriguing perspective thoughts between Bad Batch and, and, and or and uh, where our sympathies lie with the character and why. And one thing I thought about, like we, we aren't offered to feel anything sympathetic about Nolan. We don't get a quick phone call with his mom. You know, right, <laughs> we, right, right. we don't, we're not offered anything to humanize him, which makes it easier to, you know, yeah. uh, uh, want crosshair to assert um himself in this way but when i was thinking through this and, <laughs> and feeling a little guilty mm. i was thinking about cyril karn yeah yeah I yeah feel like cyril karn would have um, would have behaved almost exactly the same as nolan capable of saying just as awful of things mm -hmm. but i wouldn't have wanted crosshair to shoot cyril because I've seen the other side of Cyril. I've seen something that makes me sympathetic to him. So even though he could do, I think he's capable of doing everything that Nolan did, I wouldn't want him shot. Yeah, no, I, I totally, I really agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. Which is why, yeah, I, I thought, uh, was it Crispin Freeman as, as, as Nolan was? I hated him for the first second, but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I, I, get, I, get, I get what you there, but I, uh, the big point, I, I, was, I was absolutely rooting, rooting for it. <laughs> so I'm going to go look in the mirror and question myself. <laughs> no, no, no. Let's talk. Uh, you tried to start this positive and then I was like, this is all about death. Uh, no. So let's get back to uh, a little bit more of, of the breakthrough that there is some change uh, mm -hmm. for Crosshair. And I think it is all about, you know, what you brought up right away, which is uh, what is your value? You know, mm -hmm. the idea of value is raised in a couple of ways in the episode right away. You know, right away we got the clones being, uh, you know, retiring, being retired when they don't want to. And, and Nolan keeps, you know, using value-based terms about the cargo and, and making it clear that it's more valuable than the clones' lives. And, you know, he calls it high-value cargo stored there. Um, he, he, call, he talks about the clones as, you know, being upset that there are more clones on the mission, saying, I don't like used equipment. Um, 
I think we're, we're presented by the idea of value early on in that, um, Lieutenant Nolan's value is pretty damn low. Um, we don't know exactly how he got this position. Uh, he appears to be young, uh, but he has no experience, no skill. All of his value just comes from sort of empty empire mm-hmm. rhetoric, re- rhetoric, right? I mean, Nolan says, in my experience, respect is something to be earned. He pushes back on Nolan and says, how many missions have you commanded? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the answer is zero, zero. Uh, so there's a real contrast set up right away between the cargo, between Nolan and the clones, which I think sets us up to go on this real journey of, of being reminded of, you know, what is besides the intrinsic value of all living beings, Mm -hmm. what is the value of a clones and of clones and how does it contrast with the mystery cargo and Lieutenant Nolan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's some, uh, yeah, a lot of, a lot of stuff, great stuff about Nolan there. The, the idea is, you know, talking about the value and, and, and wow, he, he puts all this uh, value in misplaced things, right? Misplaced is value, I should say, uh, a, a position, station. Well, you can't have been, you know, you're out here. You must not be that great. And uh, look at my fur on my beautiful new thing. Uh, <laughs> the, so the emptiness of that to really drive home. The fact, uh, and again, you know, this cheap stormtrooper armor, by the way, we know it is, you know, not super effective in, in the history of Star Wars, mm-hmm. but uh, probably cheap mass produce. And it and, and he holds that as value over that. But just just all these things driving the point home because you got the great action sequence we go through. We'll talk about later, but it, it all ends up with the discovery of, yes, yeah, just breastplates and helmets. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So real point of yeah. view fire there through Nolan's eyes. Yeah. And, and, and Nolan is such a, a great perspective of, you know, the empire, the dark side of, you know, when you ally yourself with kind of an authoritarian perspective that is always, you know, only really getting power by promoting fear uh, and attacking another. Uh, when you ally yourself with them, you will always become the other, right? Like the, the clones were the heroes of the Republic. And some of Nolan's really specific language kind of othering them right like it's not just that they need to retire that they're old but like now they're now in the empire's view they're a you know look down upon other obviously palpatine you know did the manipulation of kind of blaming the mm-hmm. destruction of camino on their poor judgment to not push back against their corrupt mm-hmm. commander uh but but it's powerful to see like how quickly that has moved through imperial ranks that nolan is basically kind of spouting this like mm. stormtroopers are great that you know, uh, your used equipment and the way he says clone at the end, like, like the exist, it's not just that they're not valuable anymore, it's that they're an other. The existence of them is gross to Nolan because now they are the other that needs to be attacked. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a great point. Yeah, his disgust is so effective just just from the beginning. And I've, oh man, it gets personal too. This is why your <laughs> other question, like, I've, I've had that, you know, supervisors come by, do the inspection. You know, that guy's out of uniform. I had one part, it was a 105 degree day at the farmer's market grove in Hollywood. And they said, why is your, why is your guard standing in the shade? That's, that's not where we mm. Well, cause it's 105 degrees out and you have him in a long sleeve, <laughs> that uniform with a hat. Sorry. Yeah. And so I just, yeah. I, yeah. I think maybe to answer your, this is maybe the answer. This is probably why I was rooting for Crosshair more than I maybe should have at the end. That makes perfect sense, though, because that is that's very much aligned with what's going on in this episode of like, well, the, he has inherent <laughs> value as a human and he doesn't need to be in the baking sun. And also you you come through here, you're going to pop back into your air conditioned car and yeah. you judge this person working his ass off for yes. less money than you. Mm, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You're out of uniform. Oh, oh. Yeah. Mm. Mm. All right, back <laughs> back to value. Uh, so I, I really liked that value. The idea of value was set up in a couple of ways, but then I, I think it, it really exploded in where Crosshair actually kind of changed and, and came to life. And, and I, we were joking at the top about his little, hmm. Mm-hmm. But a couple of times what, they were like, that's the most positive noise Crosshair has made this entire <laughs> show, right? Where he's waking up a little bit to like, I, well, I want to be a loner, but actually Mayday seems pretty pretty cool we we actually kind of agree on a lot of things so yeah mm. uh, yep. that bond between them uh, mm. i think is really what what starts to to wake crosshair up what are your what are your thoughts on on his relationship with mayday and, and how crosshair kind of yeah. becomes uh, uh more insistent on holding his own value i uh, know i love it. It, it it's um 
uh, you know, put, I was looking down to the comedy whimsy section, so I'll borrow from that and mention it there again because <laughs> there wasn't a ton in this episode. But Crosshair has this wonderful delayed oomph laugh uh, to the to the shot Nolan takes, uh, you know, against um, you know, excuse me, that that Mayday says against Nolan. Yeah, uh, and it's a great little beaten joke, but it's that delayed laugh that, uh, and the laugh is a uh, hmm uh, from Crosshair. Combine that with him when he, you know, when. Mayday's like, hey, I'm Mayday. And and Crosshair kind of has another pause of, do I give him my designation number? No, all right, all right I'm Crosshair. Uh, I combine those moments of, of of him, the ice melting, so to speak, uh, though not around him, but in his heart. Uh, and, and it really built that connection well, um, down to the pressure mine, everything about it. Uh, someone who who has, I, I feel Nate, Mayday knows his value, even though he doesn't maybe fully understand how undervalued he is. And for for Crosshair to see his connection, those helmets, right? Um, mm -hmm. All those moments, talking about death hanging over it. Yeah, I thought it, I thought it was a very again earned moment and connection between them because of these little tiny acting details. Yeah, yeah, I, I love what you're saying. I feel like Crosshair. It, it, like we said, is is clinging to ignoring change. He can be the same person he's always been on a mission's a mission. The Bad Batch have really, you know, forced it away from him. There, there, there's yeah. uh, to me sadness in his, you know, response to Mayday of you know what happened to them. They're gone. Yeah. They're gone from his life. Uh, nobody wants to sit with him. Nobody wants to talk to him. Mm -hmm. The last clone we saw him have respect for Cody. <laughs> from Crosshair's perspective, pulled a bad batch on him. <laughs> and said, this ain't right and I'm leaving. And, you know, it's almost a joke, but like, has Crosshair had a conversation with the clone brother since then? Right, right. Or is it just like, I don't want to talk to any of them because they're all going to be like that, you know? Mm -hmm. They'll seem they'll seem like they're good soldiers who follow orders, yeah, who keep their heads down and do what's got to be done. But they're eventually going to come at me with that same BS that, you know, my my brothers did and Cl and Cody did, so I feel like there's this really like I've decided I can just make it alone. I don't need to have friends. <laughs> and, then, yeah. and then Mayday is just awesome at every term, and he's like, God, mm, got to be friends with him. <laughs> yeah, I like this guy. I like this guy. Yeah, yeah. no. I, 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 but again, this is this is why I go back to this thing. I, I I'm, I'm on. Like I'm glad this wasn't Echo. Glad mm -hmm. it wasn't Wrecker. Uh, um, it, it was something new and it's something in this idea of like, like what you're saying of like, you know, I don't need them. I don't, uh, you know, everyone, they're just gonna, they're just gonna bad batch me. That's a great way to look at it uh, of him trying to convince himself of this and not facing uh, the fear and, and fear of the fear will hold you back, I guess you could say. So no, I, I think it was very effective to go this way. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think it is because it's not somebody coming at him saying he's wrong. It's somebody he can respect because he it's somebody who's doing what he's doing. Right. They're like, even yeah. though the conditions are horrible, he's putting his head down and he's getting the job done, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a, in snarking back at the, you know, stupid Lieutenant Nolan who doesn't know what he's talking about. Um, mm -hmm. and, and Crosshair still is distant, right? The uh, the lines that that right. become ironic, right, of, of Crosshair. They come across the, the dead raider and Crosshair says, uh, no point in carrying dead weight. And Mayday says, remind me not to die in your watch, which of course mm -hmm. becomes ironic as they... His yeah. crosshair does scary Mayday's weight. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so I think there's that crosshair sees himself in Mayday, but Mayday is kind of still alive and, and still knows his value. Mm -hmm. But there's this other element to me that I feel like almost everything that Mayday does is a checklist of what is a good soldier, right? We've yes, we've heard the the we're good soldiers. We followed orders is a is a is a, a real belief that like mm -hmm. that Rex and many other clones tried to hold up in the Clone Wars animated series, right? Mm -hmm. We've heard it is a uh, a mind control dogma forced on them in, in the immediate aftermath of uh, of Order sixty six or in the action of Order sixty six, right? Of uh, you know when the chips flare up with the Bad Batch, they kind of they say that uh, is a is a mm -hmm. almost hypnotized mantra, right? Of something they're being forced to believe. Yeah. This is obviously maybe at the end says this, you know, after all we've done, we've sacrificed, we're good soldiers, we followed orders. He's saying it is a belief, right? And his actions, right? He he cares about his squad mates. They matter. It matters that they served and they died. Uh, he mourns them. Uh, he assigns value to Crosshair's life by saving him from the mine. Uh, he shows 
ingenuity in working with limited tech, right? I've learned to improvise. I guess all clones have had to since the war. Uh, he shows valor and sacrifice by pushing Crosshair out of the way uh, of the avalanche. So, so for me, like any sort of list you could make of like, what really does make a good, honorable soldier, a squad mate, a clone? Mayday is just like displaying one thing after another that makes it impossible for Crosshair to not see his value. This is great stuff. And, 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 and you're right to point out all of this. It was very clear down to the avalanche push, the, 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 the skills of the, the mind, all everything. But yes, it's, it's a checklist of, of everything Crosshair's believed in and said he is himself. And it's also, it, it's done with respect too, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, at least in my mind, you know, Mayday's a good character and this is, this, this is what we were are. We didn't think about w- the war ending because this is who we were. And I found my value in that. So I think it's handled with respect. Um, you know, um, but it's just the, 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 the trivial, trivial nature of what they're protecting is it, it's so out there in the open for you to point at and go, ouch, ouch that. Yeah. Like I, like you said something there about crosshair kind of see, it sees himself in him. That's the connection, but then sees, sees the value, sees, sees where, where it's all headed. And, and that just drives it all home. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I, I really think that Walking through that with Crosshair, seeing this value of Mayday, Mayday is a very likable character, I think. Yeah, totally. So to see all of that, all of that value, and also just like the strength and the bond to fight through that snow mm-hmm. and that wind with no helmet, his his skin is not right. Trust me. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the time uh, Crosshair gets back there, uh, to to have have us see and feel all of that value. Mm -hmm. Mayday's creativity, his valor, his compassion. Uh, Ever since that first broadcast episode of, of Clone Wars, where Yoda says, you're all unique. You have intrinsic value. You're living Mm -hmm. beings. All of that value just being wiped away by Nolan is, I think what triggered such (laughs) fury in me. Yeah. And what broke crosshair, right? Of like mm-hmm. that that sputtering, but he'll he'll die, he'll die. You know, crosshair isn't isn't big with words. I don't think he's writing writing an essay or anything mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. But it, it it's just the like it it's so apparent to crosshair that Mayday has huge amounts of value, intrinsic value, and skill, and honor, and experience, and and you're just saying it's not there. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's what he's saying with a but he'll die, he'll die, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, look, it, it could be a little bit, uh, uh, go with me here, a little bit of, of of something that you don't fully appreciate till you experience it. You can hear people could tell you, I, I think he, he's probably, you know, Bad Batch leaves here, we, we, this this ain't right, we're, we're going this way, and Crosshair goes, no, no, we're, I'm sticking with my job, I'm sticking with what I'm doing, I'm sticking with who I am. Oh, uh, what are y'all doing? You're leaving me again. Like I said earlier, for Bad Batch, they're the ones that changed. Uh, I'm, I'm still me, and it's like that's the problem. But, but, but sometimes, even with the bigger picture, this is going back to what I was saying earlier. But sometimes you just got to be allowed to change. You got to be given the grace to go through that journey. Uh, unfortunately, we don't until it slaps us in the face, or we experience it, or it's or someone we know experiences something. Uh, then you don't full, fully understand until that moment uh, some of your choices or your beliefs or your decisions. And I think this checklist that we, uh, the Mayday checklist, <laughs> a hero of the Republic, uh, doing his job, doing it well. They're, they're, they're an action team. And at the end of that, uh, this is what he gets. Um, yeah, it, 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 it becomes like this episode is very personal, intimate for Crosshair. And that's sometimes, unfortunately, but sometimes what we all need. Yeah, he had to really, really feel it and see it um, mm-hmm. to, you know, finally, you know, stand up and, and, and scream that I have value. The clones have value. Yeah. Uh, and and does it uh, with a laser bolt. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think there is this interesting question of, of value that goes on, too, because obviously uh, Crosshair is uh, falls unconscious. Mm-hmm. Um Clearly, stormtroopers who no longer have a lieutenant <laughs> or a commander. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure there's falls to a stormtrooper in command who has to call somebody and go, "What? So this happened? Mm. What should I do?" And somebody says, 
Crosshair has value. Mm-hmm. So bring him to us. He's only alive because the Imperial cloners think he has some kind of value. Um, so I'm curious what, what your thoughts are on that. And then I, and then I do want to have some fun speculating of what we think that value is. Uh, so, sorry, I, I, I was going to the end there. You, you, the value of, of crosshair is, is a, is a, well, is a- I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm curious <laughs> what you think about that idea of like, mm-hmm. he, he has fought for the idea that he has value. Um, and then he's sort of saved from from just being left out there to freeze by the fact that the cloners want to manipulate his value. Like yeah. they, they didn't save him because like, you know, you're right. Clones do have value and he's a beautiful person. They saved him because they're going to keep using him as Imperial equipment in some way. So it's- I- yeah, I, I was curious how you felt about that. Yeah, it's it's potentially very tragic. That ending for me was was uh, other than you know the reveal and you know, we're moving on to some other you know bigger. Oh, we get this tied with uh, Omega and Alice and all the stuff. Like we're, we're getting mm-hmm. we're getting end game here. Uh, so that was exciting just in terms of a fan. But I, I, I potentially tragic of just when you discover here's who I am and that that's that you. <sighs> Now, who knows what 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 his mind's going to be? Is he gonna, is he going to have any agency over his path forward? Uh, th- is it too far where the change came too late? But maybe it's in your heart. That's that's all the stuff running through my head. If that answers anything of of, of you, it, it was it was it was extra tragic to me. I didn't want him to die. I didn't think he was going to die. Um, but you know, there was there was no. He fights his way out and comes limping back to the Marauder. Right? At least not yet. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really tragic that yeah he, 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 well well you know the empire determines your value and now well now we're determining this this is your new path and uh you once again have no say in that how's he going to pull out of that how's that gonna is he going to be rescued is he going to be changed i don't know yeah yeah no there's so much that uh, treats him as imperial property including nolan's literal lines right and the fact that he's only saved because he still has value as imperial property mm-hmm. is Hey, he's alive. There's still hope. He can still be, <laughs> he can still be the ice vulture. He can find a way to survive, but also, mm-hmm. yeah. How is he going to respond to the fact that he's now very clear that he's not just a good soldier keeping his head down, that he's property that is only being used, you know, as, as a tool by people who have zero respect for him or his kind. Yeah. 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 Zero respect indeed. How do you, so then on the on the more ooh, what's going to happen next plot wise? Uh, why do you think he has? It, it is that that same doctor uh, mm-hmm. on Mount Tantus, uh, Emery Carr, mm-hmm. I believe. Yeah. Um, what do you think they want out of him? Do they do you think they want genetic material uh, to continue studies on on clones who turned out different, or do you think they're going to try to utilize him to track down the bad batch in Omega? I, I think that now this might become the the tracking down of uh, of, of Omega and Bad Batch, uh, which is again I think an earned now an earned story point for me. Uh, that that would feed well from last week's ending, right? Um, mm-hmm. So I, I think that's the direction we're going. Um, I also there's some part of me that's like, why wouldn't you also take? A, I mean, he's really good. Let's take his let's take his DNA. And, <laughs> oh, I don't know. Maybe it's the next phase of the dark troopers, uh, Pershing somewhere in the back with notes. I don't know, uh, but I don't necessarily think thematically that's less exciting to me than than what you know what you're talking about. And 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 now Crosshair, if he has if he has this you know control over any part of his heart, soul, and mind going forward, how how does how does this new him interact with his old friend? Yeah, I can see uh, Hemlock having like a real manipulative sit down with him since Hemlock mm. is a little bit more of a sweet talker, right? He's a talker. Yeah, he's a talker. And Hemlock could be like, you've got a raw deal. It will set you up with everything you want. One last mission, you know, mm-hmm. it, you know, that, that I'm really intrigued. And it could be both. It could be like, hey, we got a mission for you. Also, we, we took a bunch of your DNA again. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. Don't, don't, don't ask questions. Yeah. Any uh, any mm. other big picture thoughts before we take a break? Uh, no, I think we hit them all there. Uh, a lot of the, it's funny. There's not a, there's a lot of action, but a lot of things we're going to talk about, I think still feed very much so into the, the big picture, but, uh, all of it, uh, worked out so well. So I think I'm just, uh, yep. Notes are good. We're good. <laughs> notes are good. We're all good here. We have talked about value and, uh, and ice vultures. Uh, we're not done talking about ice vultures. So we'll be back in a moment with a lot more ice vulture content.
And we are back to continue our discussion of episode 12 of season two of The Bad Batch, The Outpost. We talked about some of the big ideas. We're going to get into some of the details. Uh, there were some action moments in this episode. Ken, did you have some favorites? Uh, yes, I did. I, I, I always have these like weird action moments. So in terms of watching ships landing and that action, mm-hmm. a rival to Barton Fort uh, was one of my favorites. Uh, love the choice that, you know, the, the, it reminds me of Rogue One when we saw the Death Star quote upside down, but really probably right side up. And they just kind of love playing with that a little bit there. Um, it's not all 2D Mario running forward towards the captain. <laughs> uh, and I just like the, the ship going in and the angle looking down on it and uh, the, the design again, the music, the sound design, the the, the images, uh, beautiful stuff. And, and and if landing, ships landing is action in Clone Wars and Rebels and uh, Bad Batch, this is one of the best ones. A ton of great taking off and landing. Yeah, yeah no, it, right. it was, it, it made you feel like this is not a fun place to be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is not going to be a rewarding mission. No, nope. love it. Yeah, um, I really I like the stun grenade. I'm sure we've seen them before, but it was it was mm-hmm. fun to see. You know, we've seen the droid poppers, the electricity. It was fun to see the just uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the shocking organics uh, grenade was was cool to see. Yeah, um, I also there there was a lot of build up and tension in in heading toward action. Um, mm-hmm. I really liked in the mayday and crosshair taking on. Uh, the group. I, I really liked uh, Mayday's uh, classic action role into shooting position. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. They're both so good. And going back to you talking earlier about the good soldier, they're they're both who you want to play in the video games. Yeah, uh, play as. Uh, they're, they love that. Love a lot of that stuff there. Yeah, and even Mayday's kind of cocky about it. It's like, yeah, we can get him. <laughs> oh yeah, no, which is part certainly part of it, right? Again, Mayday knows his value. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he knows his value. He knows what he can do. Yeah, he shouldn't even say cocky. It's we have a lot of experience and skills that are hard earned. We've trained and we have experience. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So what are some other uh, action moments for you? I went a little earlier. There was uh, the, the sequence with uh, the, the Raiders first attacking and uh, the ambush and you know, got Vetch dining the explosion. You see it through the infrared, but that whole sequence, uh, the explosion, the ringing in Crosshair's ear, it, it mm. ripping off his helmet, uh, shooting the Raider after that. It, it was, um, you know, it's an action sequence. It's uh, kind of fun, but it just had a lot of great purpose to it. A lot of questions where I'm like, what, how much is that just, it's ringing in his ears and that's the moment. How much of, you know, I know his chip is out. I know that, but how much is just trauma connected? Who knows what he's going through? It was a real, I thought, purposeful moment. Uh, and, and just, uh, you know, cause I already know crosshairs go with the, go with the gun. Like it, his name's crosshair. I've seen his face. Um, so it was beyond that. And I just thought it was a real, um, emotional beat in the action. Yeah, no, it, it, I think it helped to get us into, uh, feeling with him and for him, right? Mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of times, uh, he is, he's cold and cool, right? And mm-hmm. he takes a, an impossible shot from far away and he doesn't face him emotionally at all. You know, does the toothpick mean anything emotionally? Who knows? He's a cool mm-hmm. customer. So to see him rattled, right? To have that flare in his eye and, and feel pain yeah. gets us in, in a mood of really, feeling what he's feeling right totally totally no i love that yeah yeah great great uh, one what are some other ones just go uh, there was uh the um the 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 act the bigger action sequence like you said and a lot of stuff in it uh and then there was uh crosshair had a sniper shot on the raider trying to leave with the shipment cart out of the cave <laughs> and it was particularly brutal and again this you know that you talk often the tension of star wars it was one of those oh that was a that was a great shot. You know, that was, that was, he moved the scope in and it was brutal. And, you know, we don't spend a lot of time with the Raiders. We don't know what they're raiding for and what cause. And and I get that. And sometimes people want that in every bit of content. Understand it. I love that stuff, but it's not the point of this episode. And um, uh, I just thought uh, it, Crosshair, it's a reminder because we haven't spent a lot of time with Crosshair and he's just, he's damn good. He's damn good. No, I wrote that line, that, that moment down too, because mm. it was like, um, the, the the constant with the animated series of like okay here's here's the the goofy guy who has a Scottish voice for some reason yeah, you know yeah, yeah. Uh, or, or here's a real silly droid uh, you know and, and then uh, wow and then the the clone being brutally uh, murdered okay uh, yeah. what age group is this for again um, <laughs> this was definitely one of those moments of like whoa wow cool but like the second time I watched it's like did I imagine that and I I paused to make sure that I didn't. Mm. straight blaster bolt straight through the head in almost John Wick level of violence. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it goes by fast. 
I'm not criticizing it, but it it, it, it was both cool and like, damn, uh, not not messing around this episode. Yeah, no, and look, you know, yeah, not, not a criticism at all, but I, I I I go the other way where it's like. Again, I, I don't connect with everything in animation. I, I've talked about that before. I'm, I'm not a giant Pixar fan. I, I acknowledge their greatness, but I, I don't sit down with them a lot. I totally get it. But I have some friends who are like, ah, I don't know, animation, cartoons. And they don't, they're don't. they not quite saying kid stuff. But I just want to go to this episode and be like, kid stuff? You're, you, look, <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is the adult Star Wars you might be craving that you just haven't found yet. Yeah, do you think animation is just to sell toys? Well, check out <laughs> Raider on the Cart. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> with head wound. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah it, it was really, really powerful. And, and and I think the choice of the Raiders is interesting because we don't know who they are. We don't know what they want. They are locals. We, you know, we know this is an imperial and sometimes republic story. Was there, you know, was their their life, their balance on that planet disrupted? Do are they mm-hmm. stealing that gear because they need it to stay alive too? You know, I thought mm-hmm. it was interesting that. They had some clone armor on with their bandages, yeah. and Mayday had added some of their bandaging to his armor. So it's very, very subtle, but I did feel like visually it was a little bit like mm. here are two camps in hellish conditions, and powers above them have set them against one another for almost empty reasons, you know? Yeah, I like and, that. And, and they're almost visually coming together a little bit, but they we see that, but they don't get the opportunity to see that. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I actually could, I could follow you on that one pretty easily. There, I like that. I like that. Yeah, and, and you know the the raiders could just they they could be like, yeah, we came to this pilot and we're planet and we're you know stealing stuff and we've got yeah. we've got villages we're harassing, or they could be totally like, yeah, we see their point, and I don't think the episode entirely tells us either way. Well, yeah, yeah, and look, good soldiers follow orders in an episode mm-hmm. to, to weigh the the why of those orders so that's fair too. yeah yeah exactly um i think for me the other uh action moment i went to is just the avalanche itself is just 100 yeah terrible and beautiful and everything about it the the rushing and crosshairs uh choking and in the big shot from above of the sort of the the plume of uh, of snow smoke <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that's- laughs> rising up you know, all the way up to the just that great genre shot of Crosshair's hand bursting mm-hmm. from the snow. Mm, I love everything you're describing. I put down too, especially that shot that that, that you, you pull back and you get the full scope of it. Uh, beautiful. Again, you're right. We can say it every week if we want. Just, just beautiful. Yeah. So that's about it for me for for kind of pulling specific action moments out. Anything else for you? No, I think that was about it. Uh, unless you count the the shot on Nolan, uh, <laughs> which I loved it, even the way that was. Um, that was shot there too as well. But yeah, there was a lot of big, wonderful sequences and set pieces, the avalanche, the, the, the infiltration. One of the things I love, I don't, I can't remember if I've said this before in an episode of Bad Batch Report. They do such a good job more than I, I think in Clone Wars or maybe as Clone Wars got better with the tech and the, the ability to do things got better. When, when the Bad Batch, but particularly Crosshair, like grabs his weapon and just carries it. I'm not talking about firing it, carries it. The sounds, the, the clicks, mm-hmm. everything. So good. And there's just something I love about it. The tension to the detail from the acting of throwing the, the uh, you know, throwing the toothpick away wrecker last week with the, yeah, 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 yeah. You and I were talking about that. So many people <laughs> reacted in that moment. But just the sound design of just the weapons being carried, the gear. Uh, I love the detail in this. Yeah, absolutely. In the, in the, the snow foley was really, really good. It was not just, uh, we've got one crunch and <laughs> when ambiguous or, or, you know, uh, one crunch for all it, it, there was lots of different sound, uh, of snow, which was really great. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. And I agree with you that uh, I liked how just sort of like, uh, blank and sudden and not glorified or glamorized that the, the shooting of Nolan was, it was just, you know, fast and perfunctory. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Going from that to comedy and whimsy. <laughs> <laughs> this was not an episode that had yeah. wackiness as its goal. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. But there were still some, some lines that made me, if not chuckle, make a crosshair <clears throat> noise. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, where'd you go? Well, it starts for, you know, it, it, it really sets you up for who Nolan is. Not that we needed any help, but him landing, slipping on the ice, and then immediately going, you, you, you guard the ship because he's embarrassed. Says everything you need to know. Um, and I thought that was really funny. 
Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah no, the blaming it on the clone was great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked Mayday's uh, kind of introductory line of you must be our re- reinforcements. We expected you 36 rotations ago. Did you get lost? <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> yeah. Mayday's. Mayday's is great. Uh, yeah. But what else? Uh, what other Mayday zingers did you enjoy? Well, the the so we talked about already, but we should highlight the 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 delayed humph, but also uh, from from uh, you know Mayday's line, but the the, the pressure mine beat too of pressure mine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just, <laughs> uh, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I really liked the uh, you know once they've once Mayday has made it clear, like you're gonna have to earn my respect. Never been on a mission, Nolan. Um, you know, and there is that great tension, right? Of like all of Nolan's authority is structural. It is, um, it, it is agreed upon socially. It's not physically real, which I, I think is also a part of the tension mm-hmm. of Crosshair finally shooting him of like, your power is granted by everybody around here's agreement that you have power. <laughs> you are surrounded by people who have more physical power than you, um, Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, uh, which I just I, I thought of again because we talked about these early scenes with with Mayday uh, pushing back on Nolan. Uh, but I like it when Nolan leaves and, and Mayday kind of opens up and goes, "Hey, so what did you do to get stuck with this mission?" And Crosshair says, "Just lucky, I guess." It's <laughs> <laughs> great. As close to Crosshair gets to a zinger. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. He's re- he's really livening up. Yep. Yep. Uh, and I think uh, the final one for me, I, I liked it when uh, Mayday has improvised the solution on the on the mine. He's he's going around the corner and <laughs> Crosshair says, uh, glad you're confident in your work. And Mayday, oh, I'm confident. I'm just not stupid. Like, yeah, just some some great buddy banter, buddy banter, uh, soldier, soldier humor. No, I love that. I love that. Um, my final submission is one that you're always just so good at with the screenshot. So I hope, I, I, well, if people are listening to this, I'm not stepping on it because maybe you'll already put it in the promotional. <laughs> but I had the, uh, the subtitles on for the second viewing and just Raiders trilling, ice vultures <laughs> screeching. It's just, it never, it never stops making me laugh. That you know, the Raider trilling was some great weirdness, right? Of just mm-hmm. like, we don't know much about these creatures. The, the, they, they're, Head shape and eyes had a little bit of a Mimban vibe. I'm not saying they're yeah. Mimbanese, uh, but, you know, they, they got the interesting bandaging. We don't know who they are, but we know they're a little different because they trill. <laughs> yes. Yes. Good trilling. Good trilling. Good trilling, Good trilling Raiders. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. We are going to move on then, unless you have anything else. No, this is a rip roar and funny episode. I'll tell you that much. A lot of yucks and death. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. We're going to move on to another normal section of our podcast that is sometimes bursting with content and sometimes cold and barren like a snowy landscape. And I, I find it a little cold and barren this week. Uh, we like to talk about Star Wars canon, lore, connections to other stories. Uh, only a couple little things for me. Uh, you mentioned it early on. Mayday says he's been stationed there for over a year watching this cargo, which turns out to be uh, this proto stormtrooper armor, I guess, right. first generation stormtrooper. Now, um, yeah. how did that uh, not not to disappear into the uh, the timeline wars? Because <laughs> <laughs> I think Bad Batch is, yeah. you know, hey, we know exactly when it starts. We don't know exactly how much time has passed by the time we get to this right, right, uh, right. period. Is this three months after Revenge of the Sith? Is this two years? We don't know exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, but does but but here but did hearing a year affect you? Does it speak to how long, you know, this project, this plan, War Mantle has been, uh, the Stormtrooper project has been in the works for Palpatine? Yeah, it did. It goes to this, uh, you know, our our longstanding joke of Palpatine's ready with new clothes, outfits, uh, curtain colors, and uh, plans, and and he's taking pitches from the office, right? Uh, I'm sure Rampart had something to do with. You know, I, I love all of it. Uh, and, and I don't love it clones and, and the empire but yeah it, it does um it does speak to to palpatine as contingencies just pouring out of his evil pores yeah yeah so it, i really agree with you with with full acknowledgement of hey a, a good chunk of time has passed maybe maybe this isn't that much of a revelation but i kind of like the idea that palpatine is like maybe halfway through the clone wars and these clones got names they got yeah. tattoos uh, some of them are deserting they got attitude and he's like well 
I need them. <laughs> yeah. But the, as soon as Order 66 is done, uh, no, I, I'm not putting up with that. You know, I've yeah. read these people. It, it, it's his ongoing attempt, like we talked about with the Zillow Beast episode, of to try to control the natural and he can't. Yeah. Uh, so I like the idea that he's like, the second... The second I get my empire declared, uh, I got I'm doodling up some new armor drawings. <laughs> well, it's also you, you, you've uh, highlighted it before with, with, with talking to Anakin, uh, you know about the Jedi relentless and Kenobi, and you know he he holds these grudges. He doesn't let anything go. Padme, all that stuff, and, and just uh, including the clothes. They've got tattoos. What are, they got names? What is this? What is yeah. it? Do you remember that one fives? <laughs> <laughs> fives almost ruined it for us. He could have ruined everything. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. no, they, they got to go. Yeah. So that, that was a fun bit of like, um, uh, canon speculation. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, my last other two canon things are, are just reaching. Um, we got nice vulture. We got nice spider. <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel like there is a growing thing happening where, uh, sometimes these creatures, or characters will, you know, be named the next week when a, a fact file fun thing comes out on on the Star Wars on Star Wars dot com or mm -hmm. uh, there's a new entry to the Star Wars dot com databank and you find out, oh, the thing called in ice whatever is actually this. But I think there's also a just like, you know what, we don't need a name for everything. It will merge eventually vibe. Mm -hmm. uh, do you feel like that's what's going on this episode? Are you cool with that? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I'm totally cool with it. I, other than the jokes, I do love ice blanks. Um <laughs> I love that. No, I because it, it, yeah, not needed. Uh, I called them the anti convors earlier, but if they were, you know, vulture roars or something, it just it's it's I don't need it. I don't need it. it. It was an art piece for me. Yeah, the 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 frigidaires. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, that's it. That's just a refrigerator. Anyway, uh, frigidaires. The frigidaires. Yeah, there, there we go. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Ice vulture. Ice spider. What ice creature do you need next in Star Wars? Um, I want to hear like an ice hippopotamus come <laughs> roaring into the scene. It's an ice hippo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> A symbol of life. Yeah. That's what I need. Uh, I would like that very much. This is my, my final bit of canon thoughts, Ken. And this mm. is an even Star Wars canon. We're going to pivot to Cheers canon. Mm. Uh, Rhea Perlman is in this show is Sid. We've got a little bit of cheers there. Uh, of course, uh, John Ratzenberger playing a uh, major Brent Durlin in empire strikes back. We've got some mm -hmm. cheers cannon there, uh, in cheers. Uh, the owner of the bar, Sam Malone is Sam Mayday Malone <laughs> is the name of this clone. Yet more cheers cannon coming into Star Wars. I'm prepared to accept that as the answer. Uh, I think, uh, Ted Danson would play a great, uh, you know, uh, imperial officer at some point. Uh, you know, maybe one who just does his, his heart's not in it anymore. So I'm leaving that open. But yeah, I'll, I'll accept that. Absolutely accept that. Yeah, uh, I, I'm. I just want even more, uh, more cheers in Star Wars. So I was happy to Same. really stretch to see if that's possibly a cheers yeah. reference. Yeah, absolutely. Um, did you was there anything else that you picked up on? I really felt like this was such a limited focused episode that there wasn't a bunch of other no I, details. It's it's maybe more on the lore side in terms of just uh, troop collectors. Uh, but I, I did like Nolan um, Nolan's outfit, uh, the version you know, the very imperial officer, tank gunner, attic commander, snow gear vibe. Uh, and I know you know, and I'm still a fan of that stuff in, in the toys and everything. So again, that's not canon or lore, but it's just kind of, and I don't know if you've seen that exact model, so to speak before, but uh, I liked it. Yeah. That, that combination of helmet, chest plate, uh, fur. <laughs> yeah. It was like a little, cause I love those range troopers in solo. I've talked about that uh, a lot in the past, but it had that vibe. And, and also just, he, cause he looks sharp, right? He looks sharp. And, and, and it's like, you know, in his head, he's like, I, I look so in command today, but he's just the fact that he's not, it just drove the point home. Uh, yeah, no, I really agree. That that's got me thinking. Maybe this is uh this is canon. Maybe this is the beginning of uh of snow troopers. Like I know we have some some clones yeah. who are equipped for snow, right? Equipped for it. But <laughs> do some of these early stormtroopers uh go? We we really need a division that's built for this. I think that's a great actually. Actually, I think that's a great fun head cannon thing of of yeah. The there was varied clones. We know that, and I think so far we've only seen kind of the basics. And I think. 
yeah, I, I, I think there could definitely be something about that. I, I don't need that explore, but I just would love that someone's like, can we have like a snow cape? It's going to be cold <laughs> out here. Come on. Uh, you know, and I, I love, uh, you know, again, going to Nolan's outfit of just like, I'm sure he and his young Academy um, roommate, Maximilian Veers, are comparing, you know, <laughs> commander outfits and yeah, I just love all that. Yeah, like the 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 wind's really going up the <laughs> open necks. Can we please have some neck closure? <laughs> Love that. Love right that. into the nostril, the wind goes. Mm-hmm. Come on. Uh, I suppose we should. I'm sure we've talked about it before because they've appeared before. But the these um, stormtroopers, Mark One, uh, Generation One, um, do look uh, have some similarities to Macquarie's original uh, stormtrooper yeah. concept art, and that that's fun. Yeah, I love that. Was there anything that you disliked or questioned in this episode of the Bad Batch? Not at no, not at all. I, I, I the, the ending, the, the, the beat at the end, which, which is great, and going back to Tantus and really drives the story to you know uh, its conclusion probably in the season. I, I do like. I want to be clear about that. But I, it, it, it I, I almost was <laughs> bummed that that was like next week. Mm. It was a creative choice, and I, I love this episode. I got ten out of ten for me. But I, my first viewing, stuff in my you know food in my mouth, I was just like, oh, that was a great episode. Oh, what it's still going? Oh, okay, I don't know about that. Like, go move that to next week. I got to I got to process what's going on. Mm. Yeah, no, that would that would have been quite the emotional cliffhanger if it was just sort of like some confused stormtroopers going, what what do we do? Yeah, <laughs> and it's no longer it, takes only this because because that it's a fun thing and 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 I don't want anyone to think I don't love that I'm not wondering what's next next week's episodes. I'm probably gonna watch them right after we're done recording. So to be clear, um, but like I don't want that to be the conversation. I want I want the conversation. What, what are the lessons of Crosshair? <laughs> but that's not fun on Twitter. So it's all gonna be what do you think they're gonna do? Like and it, and it should be that way. You've asked that. We've asked that. I've asked. Well, like that was my only beat of just like I don't I don't need this right now. I'm dealing with crosshair. <laughs> I'm dealing with other things. I think I liked it because it 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 made the tragedy complete, right? Totally, um, thematically, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that he's saved, but only saved because it, you know what I think helped um, me feel uh, so strongly about how successfully the show made me put me in crosshair's uh, uh, shoes, his boots, his armor. Um, and maybe f- made me feel his plight of being not valued intrinsically or for his skills, but now just being valued as a piece of piece of meat, uh, his property. Is mm-hmm. <laughs> the fact that on my screener, right when he was deciding to shoot Nolan, uh, the words "property of Disney" came up over <laughs> crosshair. <laughs> There is a built-in tension, isn't there? <laughs> there's a there's a built-in tension. Not making any shocking uh, criticism here, uh, yeah. but we've joked a lot about how the the screeners have your email emblazoned on them in the center the entire time. And every once in a while, property of Disney pops up, and it was just as he was like, "I, I have value. I'm not property." Like, um, yeah. So uh, yeah, <laughs> all right, sure. yeah, yeah, all rights reserved. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we we still need him for some storytelling. So. Yeah. He's going to Mount Tantus. Uh, is there anything that we haven't talked about that you wanted to touch on? No, no, all good, all good. Yeah, the only thing for me is just to to call out. Um, I really liked that that circle of helmets that Mayday had honoring yeah. the fallen clones. That that helped drive everything home. It was just a, a really nice touch. Agreed. Yeah. All yeah. right, on to our fun final question. If you could have a figure or merch of anything from this episode, who or what do you want? I tell you what, I want, I want a Mayday figure. I loved the design of, of his outfit. And like you said, it, it takes maybe from the land and combines it with what uh, he is. I, I really, really, really love that. It, it was a great design. It, you know, there was vibes, Dengar vibes, if you want to look at it that way. But I didn't take it that way. But um, I, I want that figure. Yeah, and it, it was almost like the, this is what it takes to hold my armor together at this point, or, mm-hmm. <laughs> or I have sort of I've been here so long, I'm sort of becoming a part of this place. There's a lot of neat ways to take it, and, yeah. and it, aesthetically, so cool. Yeah, and man, man, do, does Hasbro love to make troops with a slight variation? So I think we have some hopes. Yeah, yeah. for Mayday. Um, for me, we often talk about the cinema scenes, uh, late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, you would get the action figure packs with three characters and then a little cardboard sort of backing of, of the uh, scene. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I want a cinema scene of Crosshair, Nolan, and an ice vulture. 
<laughs> just, a, just a rubbery ice vulture you can fly above. Yeah. Yep. Relive the trauma at home, kids. Be the first on your block. That's what I want. Do it. That's great. Yeah. All right. That is our big look at The Outpost, a brutal but really great episode of The Bad Batch. We are heading toward the end. Uh, for, for full transparency to our listeners, the, uh, the screeners time out uh, very soon. So we're going to watch the episodes 13 and 14. We're going to record our episodes. And then uh, the final two episodes we will be watching at the Midnight Experience <laughs> and uh, covering it all. Midnight Experience with two episodes of Bad Batch and an episode of Mandalorian. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what's going to happen that week. Uh, yeah, no, uh, bear with us. It's going to be fun. Uh, hey, you know, it, it's a lot of Star Wars and that ain't a bad thing. No, it's a very, very thrilling time, but that is it. So, Ken, you want to let people know where they can find us? I would love to. We're on Twitter at Force Center Pod. We're on Facebook at Force Center Podcast. Hive Social if you're over there. And, uh, you know, uh, where else are we at? Oh, yeah, Instagram. A lot of stuff going on Instagram. Check out our reels there, but also check out YouTube. Subscribe over there so you don't miss shorts, live shows, essays, all those kind of things. A uh, new small uh, piece coming out tomorrow if you're listening at the time of release on the YouTube channel, uh, follow us there. Uh, also, you can get uh, podcasts anywhere, Acast, Apple Podcasts, just search. You'll find us merch available at tpublic.com slash user slash force center. And don't forget, you can support us directly at patreon.com slash force center. We, we want to thank you all for helping us reach one of our immediate goals on Patreon. Uh, the live Star Wars Ranked is coming soon. Stand by for that. And a new goal will be announced shortly. Uh, you can follow me at Ken Napsock. Go to my website, kennapsock.com. Joseph, where can they find and follow you? Yeah, you can find me on all the social media as at Joseph Scrimshaw. I am on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. A lot of uh, friends are following me over there on Instagram. So find me on Instagram, uh, also on Mastodon, and in particular on YouTube. I'm putting some of my not unboxing videos up on YouTube as uh, YouTube shorts, and I'm working towards some more comedy shorts and some more short films. Uh, if you haven't checked out my short film, Unboxing the Cosmos, it is a short cosmic horror film. And uh, it's about uh, 12 minutes long. It's got some comedy uh, and it's got uh, some darkness. Uh, so if you want to check that out, I would love for it to get to a thousand views. Getting close. Thank you to everyone who has watched it. That is it for me. And that is it for this episode. So for myself, for Ken, for the absolute value of the good soldier Mayday, this has been the Bad Batch Report.